Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Execution by Gnomish Games. This is a two to six player card game where players are going to get a hand of five cards, which involve capital punishment. And they're going to be playing these cards on their opponents. On your turn, you'll draw a card and play a card and attempt to get three of the same card on your opponent's side of the field. And when you do, they'll gain a death. When one player gains all three deaths they need to end the round, you're going to tally up scores using this random chart. This chart that uses a die here and you'll score points. And of course, you don't want to score points in this game. And you'll go through three rounds. And at the end of the last round of the game, you'll check to see who has the least amount of points. And that player is the winner of the game. It's quite simple, quite straightforward, and it plays kind of like a party game. We'll talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, our review. Setting up execution is quite simple. You're going to take the deck of cards, remove the quick references and the extra card in the deck, and then you are going to shuffle the deck and deal out five cards to each player playing the game. It can be two to six players. Set aside this wheel here. It doesn't matter where the wheel is located on the wheel board, and of course the die as well. After that, then go ahead and choose a starting player to be in the game, and you're ready to go. Yep, it's that simple. Playing the game is exactly as simple as setting the game up, in fact. You'll have your cards in hand, choose a starting player, and that player is going to play a card on any other player in the game. You'll play a card on their side of the field, and then you will draw a card. That's pretty much it. The next player is going to take a turn in clockwise order where they will take a card from their hand and they are going to play a card in front of any other player that they would like to and they will draw a card. Now, there are two types of cards. You're going to have blue cards, which are capital punishment cards. You can ignore the top right number if you'd like for now. And then there are going to be red cards. Red cards are like action cards, but they are also used on your turn and as an action. And there are three types of action cards. Shift the blame, nail in the coffin, and ghost. The way that shift the blame works is you can move one or two of the same card from your side of the field to another player's side of the field, thusly giving them more cards for you to work with in order to send them to a deck. Uh, then they have the nail in the coffin. If a player already has two of the same card in front of them, you can use this card as opposed to the third copy of the card needed to kind of put that card in the death zone of that player. Um, and the final one is Ghost. Ghost you can play on yourself or in certain variants on another uh, player and it removes a death from your side of the field. Now whenever you get three of the exact same card on your side of the field, so if I got three lethal injections given to me by Bob, Jim, and Tom, I would take these three cards and set them aside, turning them sideways, referring to them as one of the deaths I have, uh, which means I only need two more for the round to end. And once somebody gets all three deaths, meaning three cards of one type and another and another, that will end the round. And what happens at the end of the round is you will take this die here and you'll take this board and you'll roll the die. I got a nine. So I'll move this uh, little six dial here over to the card that says nine, which is gonna be this little buoy here. And then we're going to check each of the deaths from each player. If I had a lethal injection card, and let's just say I also had, oh, I don't know, a firing squ squad card, I'm going to lose points based on these numbers here, the three and the five. I'll check and see, okay, the five here is next to the two, which means that is two points I'm going to gain, which is two more points than I want to gain. And then the three here, lethal injection, is a zero, which means I'll gain nothing, which I got lucky this round. And each player will do that. And then you're going to tally up your total scores. In my case, I would have a... Uh, well, I would have two points plus zero, so two points, and each player would check as well. Then you would rinse it once again, rinse and repeat. You take all the cards, shuffle them up, and deal five cards to each player, and the next round would begin going clockwise until another death happened, or three deaths happened in front of a player, ending the round. After three rounds, whoever has the highest score is the biggest loser, and whoever has the lowest score is the winner. There's also a bunch of variants of play, which I'll talk about in the review, uh, such as the cute throat, <laughs> or the chosen by death mode, or the teams mode. Uh, but that's pretty much how the game goes. It's quite a simple little straightforward party game involving playing cards on your opponents and trying to send them to their execution. <laughs> execution. <laughs> their demise. Okay, so this game is a wild, uh, crazy, random party type card game. There are take that actions, there are actions that can help you, and for the most part you're just playing cards of a type in front of another player, attempting to basically remove one player, thusly ending the round, and checking scores. And you want to get the lowest score possible. Now, as far as the main game goes, you have no control about what goes in your hand, only how you play the cards, so the strategy is going to be in who you want to play what card to, and how likely they have 
to having something like a nail in the coffin or a shift the blame card that can inherently mess you up. Do you want to actually put two of the same card in front of another player, or do you want to kind of versatile them out so that they can't return the favor by giving you two of the cards that you gave them? And you're always worried about what they might have and how they might present what's going to be in front of you. You do not want to have cards as in your death zone, these still three piles, because you're almost guaranteed to lose if you have the most. Now, not always, because this little random mord here can trigger weird things, in which case, maybe you uh, have these three. Your, your opponent has just one, which is this little cupcake thing, <laughs> and it's going to be 10 points for them, which is terrible. And maybe you had these three, the cake, uh, the uh, needle, and the gun, in which case you're only going to score three points, where they're going to score a total of six or five or four. And so there's, there's random chance where even if you had the worst possible hand, you might not suffer the most negative consequences. And that's basically how the game goes. Dropping cards, throwing them down, utilizing the cards in the best way you possibly can based on what you have. Play a card, draw a card, play a card, draw a card. Um, what makes this game really cool, in my opinion, uh, is when you start playing with the chosen by death mode. So now, in the chosen by death mode, what happens is when you have two deaths on a player, and you want to make that third death happen, you specifically are going to trigger a specific type of death because that will uh, decide not using a die here anymore as a random chance, but where this is going to go. So for instance, if electrocution was the last death on another player, that player is gonna suffer six points because that was the last death. And that is how this is going to be arranged. Thus, so you can kind of minimize the amount of damage that you're taking and maximize the damage that that player is taking. Now, there's still random chance, obviously, as to what cards you get, but now you have more control over what happens with this wheel. And I like control in these type of games. It just a little bit is nice. I don't mind the randomness, because this game is pure randomness. Even when you have team modes, even when you're playing with acute throughout modes. Now, of course, it does like it a little bit more advanced and whatnot, but ha having that extra additive of knowing where this is going to go is, is, is pretty cool. Overall, though, this is a cute little random party game. It's a lot of fun. I like little different types of pieces of artwork that show something very sweet and cute, but labeled with something not so great. A typical capital punishment that's not that wonderful. Uh, but it does a good job of, of playing around with those type of tropes. Now, additionally, is this a game for kids? It's like, yes, it is as far as how the game works and as far as the artwork goes, but uh, keel hauling, drawn and quartered, lethal injections, uh, a ghost card hanging, electrocution, like I'd probably say it's in the teen category and for 13 and up I believe that's probably about right for the game. It's only about 20 to 30 minutes and with two to six players I always suggest playing with these type of games, the more players the better. It gives you a more a variety of where you can place things down. At a two player game, I am not for this. It's not super fun. You basically have the cards in your hand, you're playing a card on your only opponent, they're playing a card on you, and you're just drawing a card, and you're just constantly going back and forth, hoping that you're going to score the pair to then drop a uh, nail in the coffin. But if you don't have one of these, or you don't have the third version of that card, maybe they'll shift the blame and maybe they'll give it back to you. And so it's just kind of a back and forth thing where just somebody's gonna win, somebody won't, but it doesn't feel like you've really done anything. Now for younger kids especially, it probably wouldn't be such a big deal, but because the game has this type of uh, uh, language on it. It's not really for the little kids. So I would suggest playing this game at three at the minimum and six is the best. The more players the better as far as how you can kind of con con connive and place certain cards on certain people and how you want to score the points in the game and making sure that when you play with the chosen by death mode, the best mode, uh, you can determine what points you get and what points your opponents get by moving this wheel and having some control in that matter. But overall, it's a quick game, it's simple, it's cute, and it's fun in large player groups. You're not gonna see anything super remarkable as far as for how this gameplay works other than this wheel here, which is a cool little aspect, little mechanism. But for those players who like those typical party games like exploding kittens and bears versus babies, those type of things, then this is going to fall right into that wheelhouse. Overall, a solid little game that I would play with certain groups, specifically younger kids and maybe, maybe certain types of families. Um, and of course, if I were to choose to play, I would be choosing to play chosen by death. Anyway, links down below. 
Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Execution by Gnomish Games. If you're interested in picking up the game, there is a link down below, like I said, in the description. And if you've seen more than one of our videos here before and you like them in the past, then I strongly suggest you go ahead and subscribe. It does greatly benefit us and we do greatly appreciate it. That means if you watched more than one, obviously you'll probably watch another later down the line. Uh, additionally, too, if you'd like, you can watch us play our live streams every Sunday and every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Wednesdays are whatnot and Sunday. Sunday is everywhere else. The website is unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, kickstarter lists, and more. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to executioning you next time. <laughs>